So it's during this time you do your dhikr. Now, what the Imam is saying when he says he's advising you to do dhikr after dhikr, if you look in the fiqh books, like Imam Bahauddin al-Maqdisi, rahimahullah, he says, the only time someone should stop to do dhikr on the hajj is when they are in ghusl or when they are in the bathroom relieving themselves. Because you have the dhikr before going in and the dhikr before coming out, so you're still doing dhikr. The rest of the time, you must not cease from dhikr. So on Hajj, there should be very little conversation between you because of the time that you're doing dhikr during the rituals and rites of the Hajj. That's why Allah keeps emphasizing dhikr because it's repeated in the ayah twice. So it's a dhikr after dhikr. Stay in a state of dhikr. The talbiyah constantly being used. From the time you're on the plane, you arrive. You do the talbiyah. People feel tired. They start slipping into earthly conversation. Someone starts the talbiyah again. You arrive, get shaken down by security forces, passport taken off you. You do the talbiyah. You get your passports back. You get shaken down for your bags and your luggage. You do the talbiyah. You get your luggage back. You pray fajr. You do the talbiyah. After, you continue. You get on the buses. You sleep, you rest as much as you can on the bus, you arrive, you see the, you see the magnificent minarets of Masjid al-Haram, the Talbiyah. All throughout the time, whenever you feel listless, lazy, slack, you think you're just about to argue with that person next to you, you start the Talbiyah. Because it will stop so much fitna, and you'll get so much reward. Yes, but brother, you shouldn't have taken that bed because that was... Okay, لبيك اللهم لبيك and you start again. It stops the fitna. Because you see brothers out there that are arguing about food or they're arguing about other things. Or I wanted that better, whatever else. Akhi, sleep on the floor. Sleep in the Masjid al-Haram. I know a brother that came with us. He slept in the Masjid al-Haram for all three weeks while we were there. Wow. Whenever he was in Mecca, he slept in the Masjid al-Haram. We were, the, the brother, one of our Za'im people almost had to get in an argument with him. And the brother said, let me make myself clear to you. I can either sleep here, and he gestured to the Kaaba and its gilded curtains, or I can sleep in room 210. What would you do if you were in my situation? So he left him alone, and the man was sleeping in Masjid al-Haram, being woken up by the actual, uh, the actual Mu'adhin, because he was next to the Mu'adhin's booth, so the Mu'adhin would open the door, and he'd slide him across with the door, because he's in front of the door. And so he'd be woken up by the Adhan, and he'd wake up, he'd make his wudu. That's, subhanAllah, that's a blessed position to be in. So that time where you're using that dhikr, use it wisely. Because you don't get every day to be in a masjid al-haram. Imam ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah, he then says, quote, And when you have completed your rites, then remember Allah as you had remembered your forefathers or greater than that, and with even more devotion. There are some people who say, our Lord grant us in this life the best and what is in the hereafter a portion. Imam ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah, he says about this ayah, he says, quote, So the statement, then you go out with all of the people, remembering first what Allah had said. You had before that time been in manifest error. Now there are three things that are referred to here. One is that they had been in manifest error before they had been brought back to Islam. As stated by Ibn Abbas. Secondly, it's referring to the fact that before they had guidance that was given to them. As said by Muqatil and Zujaj. And thirdly, it was before the Quran was revealed to them. As stated by Imam Sufyan Thawri. Rahimahullah. So go out with the people when they head out from their location. And go out with them. Hasten to the, from the place where the other people have gone and return. 
With regard to this statement, Aisha Umm al Mu'minina radiallahu anha, she said, The Quraysh, how they used to be with the people and whoever had their religion, they used to hold back and wait. They would stay at Arafah on the 10th and go to Muzdalifah. And they would say, we are the cotton, the very best of the sacred house. And the rest of the Arabs would go ahead to Arafat while they lagged behind. So this ayah was sent down to advise them to go ahead with the rest of the people. Because the place where they stopped at was Homs. Now when they were told to move out, they were told to do so just as all of the other people had gone out. They had been told this. And the commands that they received were the same commands that the rest of the Arabs and the rest of the people received. And go out with the people is, in, is referring to four groups of people. One, it's referring to all of the Arabs. Not just one or five of the bands that were around them. Which is a direct reference to the Hadith of Aisha. Secondly, the, the intent of people here is referring to Ibrahim al-Khalil alayhi salam. Because he is referred to as the people in this ayah. Because he is the one that left the signposts and the guides for how the people are to commit the Hajj that were revived. As said by ad dahaq ibn Muzahim. And thirdly, the intent of people here is also referring to Adam alayhi salam. Because this is where he came to after coming down to earth after a duration of time. As mentioned by Ibn al-Shihab al-Zuhri. It's also referring to the people of Yemen. And Rabi'ah, because they used to move out from Arafah rather than from the other location. So Allah in this ayah is talking specifically to the Quraysh that they must imitate and go along with the others. And by default, in the second point, he's speaking to all the Muslims so that they should go out at the same time. Because the people are all in Adam and Ibrahim. And the people here are to go out. They're to move out from Muzdalifa to Mina in preparation for the day of sacrifice. So the Ifada from Arafat and the Ifada from Muzdalifa, they are to go out. So when you have gone out from Arafat, then mention Allah. So they go out from that location. Now, this is the same point as what we mentioned before. This ayah has within it what is called an ellipse. So the ifadah that is being referred to is when the people move from Arafah to their next location. While the ayah that is referring to al-Muzdalifa refers to them headed out and prepared to go to Mina. Allah's name al-Ghafoor is from the names of Allah. And it is the one who veils the sins of the slaves with his mercy. And he is the one that possesses all forgiveness. So he forgives again and again and again. And this is the significance of this matter. Allah the Exalted has then said, Regarding, regarding this particular matter. And when you have completed your rights, mention Allah as you mentioned your fathers, as you mentioned your fathers or with greater devotion. The reason for this ayah being revealed is that firstly, at the time of the age of ignorance, people used to gather during the Hajj season. And they would mention what their fathers did in the days of their fathers and their lineage in the times of ignorance. And they used to boast about this matter. And so Allah sent down this ayah. 
And this is the meaning of the ayah that has been narrated from Al-Hasan, Ata and Mujahid. Secondly, the Arabs, they used to talk a lot and to chatter and to say, Oh, your, because of your father, they only did this because of this and this. And this ayah was sent down regarding that, as narrated from Al-Hasan. And thirdly, the people, when they completed their rites, there used to be the man that would stand up at Mina. And he would say, O oh Allah, my father was the greatest of the men and strongest. He had the most wealth, so give me a lot of money as he had. And, he used, and they used to not mention Allah. He would only mention his father. He asked that he be given for his dunya whatever he wanted. So this ayah was sent down. As Sudai has mentioned this as well. Now the word manasik means places of worship or points of preparation. And the intent of the word manasik here in this ayah means all of the points of hajj that you are to go on. And secondly, they are the points of sacrifice because a sacrifice is done on hajj. And the people admit that. And people would swear by their fathers during this time, but they were told to remember Allah with more devotion. Although they would mention the best of their fathers, they would mention them and they would forget the best of what Allah had done for them. They would mention the children of their fathers because they were the first one to begin the lineage of the rest of the tribe. But no, they are to remember Allah. And when it was said that from among mankind is the one who says, Our Lord, give us in this life and whatever is in the hereafter a portion. What this is in reference to is give us the good of it. In this life. So we can take it. But the good things of the earthly life are seven. The good things of the earthly life are seven. Number one. The righteous and pious wife. As said by Ali ibn Abi Talib. Secondly, is worship, as said by Sufyan ibn Hussein from Al Hassan al Basri. Thirdly, it is the knowledge that goes with worship, the knowledge that goes with worship. And this is mentioned by Hisham from Al Hassan Al Basri. Fourthly, it is wealth, as said by Abu Wa'il, As Sudai, and Ibn Zaid. Fifthly, it is the pardon from Allah, as said by Qatada. Sixthly, sixthly, is wide sustenance. and plentiful sustenance as said by Muqatil seventh is the favor of Allah given by salvation as said by Ibn Qutaybah 
the best of the hereafter are three in number. <laughs> 